John Marshall, car dealer, left his home in Bellaricky at about 10 a.m. on May the 15th, 1996, to finalise a business deal in Kent. His black Range Rover is believed to have crossed the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge into Kent at about midday on the same day. He didn't return home and failed to keep other appointments that day. He was reported missing that night by his wife Tony, who he would normally contact regularly throughout the day. John was a devoted family man and his disappearance was completely out of character. Seven days later, after he disappeared on May the 22nd, John's body was found in straw in the unlocked boot of his Range Rover by a police officer at Round Hill, Sydenham, South London. Inquiries revealed that his car had been abandoned in the Sydenham location early on the morning following his disappearance. John had been shot twice in the head and chest execution style. The only thing clear about the weapon was that it wasn't a shotgun. The Range Rover keys, a grey head sports bag, two mobile phones and an 18 karat gold watch with a blue face were missing. However, £5,000 cash that he had taken with him the morning he disappeared was still in the vehicle. When John Marshall was found shot dead inside his Range Rover, five months after the resident killings, speculation was rife that the deaths were linked, especially as the Bellaricky car dealer had been a former partner of Pat Tate's and the pair were both keen on bodybuilding. The motive certainly wasn't robbery as £5,000 in cash was found on the dashboard of Marshall's vehicle. But Detective Superintendent Mike Gamble, who headed the murder inquiry, said there is nothing to suggest Mr Marshall was anything other than an honest businessman. He was in a car business partnership with Pat Tate about 12 years ago, but because of Pat Tate's behaviour, John Marshall got out of it. The worst Mr Marshall got up to was smoking a bit of cannabis, snorting a bit of cocaine, and he avoided paying his income tax. He added, You don't need an O-level to sell cars. You just need streetwise connections and a bit of muscle. Mr Marshall would deal in anything. He could go into a scrapyard in the morning, buy a written-off Mercedes for £8,000, sell that, buy something else, trade that and end up with five locked-up garages full of stuff in Kent at the end of the day. Money very rarely changed hands. For example, he would ask a builder who owed him £5,000 to put up a roof on his house instead. The same with the swimming pool in his garden. He had energy and was quite a good businessman. The investigation into the death of 35-year-old Marshall, who lived in Blind Lane with his wife Tony and three children, is no longer active, though the case remains open. Superintendent Gamble said, We didn't have a murder scene to examine. We didn't have any witnesses or the weapon. We know he died fairly early on the day he disappeared, May the 15th, 1996, and it was within 20 miles of the Dartford Crossing, but we don't know exactly where. The Range Rover was found in Signum, Kent, days later, and the body of Mr Marshall, who was close friends with TV actor Billy Murray, who played Mickey Steele in the Rise of the Foot Soldier movies, was found in hay in a blanket. Detective Gamble said, We had the hay tested by a Belfast scientist, who is an expert on it, but he said it could have come from anywhere in the UK, and there was no earth attached for us to test. He admitted, Police think it was a professional hit, in that the killer was paid for it, and added, I believe I know the motive and why he died and probably who set it up, but I just can't prove it.